Washed in the waters of baptism, we've been buried with Christ into his death. On this night of nights, Christ rises victorious from the grave when we rise with him, sharing his new life. Come, let us keep the feast. Come, let us enter God's presence with thanksgiving. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing. As the sun began to rise on the morning after the Sabbath, she walked with the other women towards the tomb. The other women were all weeping, and as she watched them, she felt almost jealous. Oh, she knew that such tears could be healing to the heart, but hers felt dead, like a stone. Oh, it had been through so much, could it ever learn to trust, much less love again? And her mind slowly drifted back over the last three years, she and the other women had journeyed with Jesus and the others, providing for them out of their resources. And their lives had been equal parts, Martha and Mary, learning the joy of serving others as they served him who preached that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, a kingdom where women were welcomed, where, where they were respected. He knew them, each and every one of them, and called them each and every one by name. And at a time when all the other rabbis forbid that women be taught Torah, Jesus welcomed all, men, women, what even children to come and learn from him. And such lessons, lessons of a God of love, lessons of loving each other, especially those less fortunate. And she had felt her heart blossom within her. But then her heart started to quake as she started hearing bits of foreshadowing creep into his preaching, foreshadowing that grew more foreboding the closer they came to Jerusalem. And then this last week, oh, it had started so wonderfully, the entry into Jerusalem, and her heart had soared as she had cheered along with the rest, hailing Jesus with loud cries of, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. And then the chief priests and temple officials had told Jesus to get his crowd under control. And Jesus said, if they were silent, even the rocks themselves would cry out. And her heart started to feel uneasy. And the very next day, Jesus went into the temple and he overturned the tables of the money changers, loudly proclaiming from scripture that my temple should be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And her heart felt fear. Did he not realize what he was risking? Did he not realize that the temple officials, the chief priests, they would never allow such an overt challenge to their authority? 
and the fear in her heart turned to terror at that mockery of a ch trial. And then on the day when most of the men disappeared, she and the other women felt their hearts break as they wept at the foot of that Roman instrument of torture, the cross. The women watched through their tears as his body was laid into the tomb, and at the very moment that huge stone was rolled into place, she felt her heart harden and die. She helped the other women prepare the spices and then the ointment, and then all of them together rested, according to the law, on the Sabbath. Which brings us to that next morning. The women's concern as to how they were going to move that heavy stone turned to surprise as they found that the stone was rolled away. She and the other remained at the tomb while Mary ran to tell the disciples. Simon Peter, ever the fastest, came running up at the head of the group. He peered into the tomb and he was perplexed at finding no body, merely linen wrappings lying there, and he and the other men walked away, shaking their heads in bewilderment. The women stayed. Mary Magdalene summoned all of her courage and she looked inside the tomb and she was amazed to find in there two angels dressed in white and they looked at her and said, woman, why are you weeping? And she almost snorted aloud. They're asking Mary this question. Why is she weeping of a woman standing in a tomb? Oh, but Mary Magdalene was much more polite. She gathered together her composure and she told them, they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him. And suddenly, as if from nowhere, there stood behind her another man who asked her the very same question. Woman, why are you weeping? Who do you seek? And Mary Magdalene, believing him to be the gardener, said, Sir, if you have taken his body, please tell me where you have put it. And he looked at her with eyes filled with love, eyes that could see to the depths of her soul, and he spoke one word, her name, Mary. And hearing him speak her name, it was as if scales fell from all the women's eyes. Mary Magdalene exclaimed, Rabboni, and made to embrace him. But he said, no, no, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, tell the disciples that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And he disappeared. And she stood as Mary Magdalene ran to tell the disciples and all the other women ran along with her. And she stood there frozen in place, her mind whirling. Could this possibly be true? Could she have truly seen what she thought she just saw? And slowly, ever so slowly, she felt cracks forming in the stone that encased her heart. And like a seedling in the springtime, she felt hope take root in her heart and begin to grow. And she turned and she hastened to catch up with the other women.
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you are not receiving the meal this morning, receive this blessing. May the risen Lord, Jesus Christ, be forever the end and the beginning of all your stories. Amen. If you are receiving the meal this morning, hear these words of promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in life that is abundant and eternal. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us forth as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.